Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? Welcome to Divers Ready. My name is James. It is so great to see all of your smiling faces. This video is really for the subscribers. It's long overdue. A lot has been happening with the Dream Dive Locker build out and I owed you guys an update. So I figured I'd show you some of the things we've been working on, let you know what the next steps are with the Dive Locker. And then afterwards, I'm gonna go back to the comments and questions I got on the first Dive Locker build out video and answer some of your concerns and see if I've implemented any of your ideas. So let's dive into it with some B-roll sequences so you can see what we've been working on and then I'll do you a little walking tour. Ready? Go! So I suppose the most obvious change is that the dive locker is no longer fluorescent pink. Three coats of primer took care of that and now we have a blank slate to work with. Over here I've painted five samples of colors I'm considering. One, two, three, four, five. Let me know in the comments below your preference. Uh, that would help me out a lot. I'm leaning towards one number already, but uh, I greatly value your input. You've been very helpful so far, everyone. Uh, next thing you're going to notice, obviously, is all of this red conduit on the wall. Uh, my buddy Rob, who is also a student of mine and a fellow tech diver, uh, is a master electrician and he came in, realized that the drywall is stuck right onto the concrete and that putting any kind of uh, electrical system into the walls was going to be a major pain in the neck. Uh, decided to go with more of a commercial look and put the conduit on the outside. Not all of it is attached to the walls yet because I'm trying to paint behind it and so on. And I've got to do some touch up on the red paint. But apart from that, we have a fully functioning electrical system complete with charging station. Tons and tons of power options, USB plugins, uh, fixtures for lightings, fixtures for security cameras, all that good stuff. Plus, of course, 220 volts for the AC system, which is yet to be put in. We've also put in these dividing walls here. Um, so now the room is very much two rooms. Uh, we have the storage space back here behind the white wall, which you really can't make out in this definition. It's kind of a Stanley Kubrick set right now. Um, but yes, we have a nice storage area, again, plain white. And then we have this side of the wall, the office area. That's where my desk is gonna go, if you remember. And then the power outlet's a convenient height for plug-in. Standing desk, thank you very much. Continuing the red theme, I have a beautiful first aid kit, which is gonna be mounted to the wall very soon. I've just got spray paint, a white cross on the front of it. And then you're also gonna see in this corner, the prep has started for the plumbing. So we've got drainage and water coming in. That should be happening this week. This is the seat I picked out, utility cabinet with a uh, Faucet already included, stainless steel sink, and a cabinet underneath in red. Happy days. Last but not least, lighting. So we changed out the halogen lights for these bluer, cooler LED lights. And then we put in two strips of track lighting, one on each side of the room. And these have six LED lights in a warmer Kelvin temperature. Tons of lighting options, and they're obviously maneuverable, so I can point them at whatever I want to focus on. We've got one over the seat right now one over each of the workbench station areas, and obviously two pointing down onto my, where my desk will go, 
and a couple of other features there. Next, I've got to take you guys outside because a lot has been changing in the outside portion, which I really didn't talk about too much in the first video. Ooh, overexposed, overexposed, overexposed. So if you remember before the tenants moved out, I walked up that long driveway there and we've now created this fenced in area. So basically we have a little outside compound here and we're gonna start building out some workbenches. Essentially this is gonna be kind of a drainage board slash work bench slash drip table. So the idea will be to put a 100 gallon rinse tank plumbed in in this area over here next to the hibiscus bush. And then this bad boy is gonna be mounted to the inside of this fence, about 42 inches off the deck, reinforced by four by four uh, footings. Probably do two shelves, top and bottom. This thing is damn heavy when it's mounted to the wall. It's going to need super reinforcement, but that's very much my style to over-engineer everything. So it's just what it is. Now, what I did do was print out some of the comments and questions from the first Dream Dive Locker video, and I figured we'd just go through them together uh, and I could update you. A lot of questions about alcohol, a lot of questions about where does the beer fridge go, where does the Guinness kegerator go, uh, where does the margarita machine go. Uh, thanks, Dr. Mac and Rockhead and Shane Scott all commented about my alcohol supply. Don't you worry about that, I got that covered. It's, it's, it's all in hand, you'll see. I've got a feeling the last video in this series will be the big reveal and, and you're gonna see some changes. So I'm sure you guys are gonna approve. Uh, Brad Scarp said, seems like kind of a small place to teach classes in. You're right, Brad, it would be. If I had eight open water students, it would be pretty damn cramped in there. Uh, but my model for teaching is that the best way to learn how to scuba dive is one-to-one -one with your instructor. And so that's how I teach. I will teach two, you know, two students at a time if they're a couple and they absolutely insist, but 99% of the classes I teach are one-to-one. -one. So there's more than enough space in there for me as the instructor standing at the whiteboard and a student will be on like a breakfast bar set up on a bar stool, taking notes, doing exams, etc. So plenty of space for a classroom for my style of teaching, but you're absolutely right, Brad. It, it's not like I'm gonna set up, you know, 16 chairs in there and run an IDC out of it. That's that's not the goal. So, hope I answered that question. Uh, Thomas Nelson suggested I put a 36 doorway instead of a standard interior door. Great suggestion, Thomas, and implemented. So, that doorway in the dividing wall there is open. Uh, it's not gonna get an actual door. And I did make it 36 inches wide and it was based on your suggestion. So I wanna say thank you very much for that. Appreciate it. Um, Rockhead, my buddy Steve, uh, he commented you should consider a workbench in the wet space, maybe along the dining wall we were installing. Um, yes, well, I've got workbenches that are going to be on the outside area. These are going to be my wet working bench areas, and then there's plenty of dry workbench area in the office. Um, didn't really have space in the equipment room because I've got so much equipment to store, so didn't really want to put any counter space in there. Yeah. I uh, hope that answers your question, Rockhead. Frederick commented, a lounge area nearby. Yeah, we're gonna see there's probably room for a small love seat style sofa, or maybe just an armchair in the corner of the room. Um, well, we're gonna see. I'm, I'm kind of filling out the space as it goes based on the needs. If there's room enough for a love seat or a, uh, you know, a small sofa, then absolutely I'll throw one in there. But, uh, but right now I can't plan that far ahead. Darren Brewer commented, nice James, a shadow board on the wall for your tools would be cool. As for the beer fridge, put it by the pool and fill it full of Thatcher cider. Um, okay, preference, I do like cider. I am from the West Country of England. Um, shadow board on the wall for your tools. What I'm thinking of actually, Darren, right now is a slat wall system. So putting a slat wall on the end wall uh, on the equipment storage side and having fixtures there to hang fins and masks, maybe a shelf for computers, etc. Um, as for tools, I've got a pegboard system already picked out for that. Uh, and plus we're gonna have lots of drawer space as well. So thank you for that. Um, that side mount guy commented, don't forget to add a smoke detector and tie it into the security system. Would hate for a battery meltdown to damage the greatest dive locker. Absolutely, already in process. Uh, thanks that side mount guy. Absolutely, that's gonna happen. And then Jason Jackman, one of my former uh, students uh, up there in Canada, he commented, don't forget a spot for Ziggy to hang out. <laughs> Jason, I mean, really, like that's the first consideration. Dog bed, where does the dog bed go? Of course, Ziggy is gonna be a major feature. It wouldn't be the world's greatest dive locker if it didn't have a dive pup. The security system has started because we've already put in a smart lock uh, and reinforced the deadbolt system there. Um, you can see over here where the main power for the house is. 
that we've just ran conduit down and underneath and then the second line of conduit there is for the internet which I still have to organize getting in here so let's talk about next steps then the next thing I need to do is make this space move in ready that includes finishing the painting on the walls and prepping the floor basically those two things plus installing the AC system AC system is going to happen hopefully this week if not next week and as the same with the painting I've just got to decide on a final color so if you guys can help me out with that it would be greatly appreciated. But we need to prep the concrete floor for painting. That involves putting down muriatic acid, scrubbing that around, leaving it sit for a little while and just etching the surface so it'll take a paint. And I'm gonna use an elastomeric paint so that it's actually waterproof. Come up to the baseboards with that so we've got kind of a splash guard in the office, but also come up to about waist height in the wet room in the, in the dive gear storage room. I haven't fully decided on what shelving system I want yet. I'm looking at how much shelving space I'm using right now and obviously trying to apply room to grow philosophy. Um, but I've got an idea of what I want and, uh, and we're gonna make it happen. Most importantly is I've got enough hanging space. So that, that's a load taken off my mind. And then yeah, probably a slap wall system for the smaller items like you know masks and fins to hang and all that kind of good stuff. Thank you for indulging me. I know this isn't a DIY channel, this is a scuba diving channel, but I'm just super excited about this project and I hope that you enjoy watching it. And maybe it's inspired you to, even if you've just got a closet in your spare bedroom where you keep dive gear, just have a route through and a bit of an organization. I mean, what else have we got to do during quarantine? It's, uh, you know, it's a sad thing. I've got a feeling that as soon as we're allowed to go diving again, I'm gonna need a scuba refresher. Anyone volunteering? Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. It really means the world to us and let us know in the comments below one two three four five what color do you think for the walls and also any other comments or questions you've got fantastic the next video in this series is going to be the big reveal when everything is completely finished but like i said be patient for that it might not be for six weeks or so yet until next time ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for watching my name's james this was your divers ready video for this week dive safe and dive often guys <laughs>